Welcome to another episode of the Signs of Our Times, and it's good to be back live with you and in person. Sorry I couldn't bring you a live video last week, but in case you missed it, I did bring you an audio study. And just to recap, we covered uh, some more transgender insanity from the Democrats and the NCAA. I basically talked about how they are pushing for boys to be able to play physical sports with girls, and I'm talking about wrestling, football, basketball, which they should have no business playing against young girls. And at the same time, that would allow the boys to use the same locker rooms as the girls, and that can lead to nothing good. That's going to have a lot of unhappy fathers in this country. And also, they are boycotting the state of Idaho, much like they did during the years of the Obama administration with North Carolina and some other states, because the state refuses to allow older men to use the same restrooms as little girls. May I put it another way? Older, confused men, because these are men who feel that they're women. These are the guys you see the pictures of on Facebook, in the news, with the mugshot, some 40, 50 year old dude with makeup on got charged with, you know, peeking over the bathroom stall at a little girl or touching a little girl. That's what those bathroom bills in Iowa, North Carolina, the rest are meant to protect against. And yet the Democrats are full throttle pushing it for equality for all, even men who feel like they're women at 50, 60 years old who want to use the same bathroom as a preteen girl. I'm sorry, that's wrong any way you look at it. Uh, you don't have to be a Bible believer like me to, to see that. And so I addressed a lot of that last week. Also, I talked about my opinion on the whole mask, face mask craze in this nation. Now, I don't really want to get too much into that today because I covered it in great detail last week. So go back and listen to last week's episode to hear that stuff and to listen to Genesis chapter 20, Bible study. But today, believe it or not, is if that stuff I was just talking about was not crazy enough, the left have gone off the deep end, even more so than they had already gone. I mean, there's, there's really no going back now. They just, they're off the rails. So before I even get into this, which should shock all of you, even Democrats, to those of you in the middle of you, you Democrats who can sometimes switch sides and vote for a different party, I don't care how much you think you hate this president because of his past sins or because of his brash style. You may not be comfortable with the way he presents himself or with the way he talks or with how he gives nicknames to opponents or whatnot. I actually disliked the guy when he was running against Ted Cruz because in 2016 I voted for Cruz and Trump won and I was upset because... I felt that with his past relationships with the Clintons and with the Democrats, that he was a fake, that he was still liberal deep down and that he was going to get into office and all these conservative things he was promises, promising were never going to happen. And he proved me wrong. And I am honest to admit that I was wrong about him. Now, while he may not be perfect, he may not be a holy Bible thumper like me, one thing I know is that in his four years in office, he has done his best to protect the liberties and the freedoms of Bible believers like me. And he has done his best. Now, I don't so much agree with his deal of the century, the peace plan for Israel and Palestine. Obviously, any president, whether it be Bush, Clinton, Obama, I don't agree with any of those peace plans. But in his mind, and also indeed, he has been an ally to Israel. And that's why I'll be supporting him over Biden or over any Democrat any day of the week. And what is the alternative to Donald Trump? I'm going to tell you right now. Especially to any of you out there who call yourselves Christians and Jews and who say that you believe the Bible and the Torah of God. Number one, the Democrats are going to hostilely target Bible believers in Israel exactly like they did during the Obama years. If you supported that, you're not a Christian or Jew. Number two, they're going to be for infanticide on demand. What is infanticide? For those of you that don't know, it is the most extreme level of abortion. It's where the baby is actually born, delivered, 
placed on the operating table by the doctor, and then the doctor can legally say to the woman, okay, do you still want the baby? If the woman says no, the doctor can literally murder it on the table. That's infanticide, and that's what a majority of the Democrats today are supporting in the Senate, in Congress, and governors of states are pushing for, Democrat governors. So that's where their party's going. Number three, grown men can use little girls' bathrooms, what I talked about to open this. Number four, your father, your uncle, your grandfather will be beaten in the streets or in a mall or at a gas station for not kneeling to a Black Lives Matter activist. And you don't believe me? Just go on Twitter, go on Facebook, and type in Trump supporter or conservative or old Christian man beaten by Black Lives Matter activists or protesters. It's to the point where they're not trying to convince you to support their ideology or to come over to their side. They're saying, if you don't agree with us and if you don't bow to us and to our agenda and to our group, then you will pay the price. Conform or else, basically, like Islam. Islam is convert or die. This Black Lives Matter radical group today is saying, if you don't agree with us, if you don't support us and pledge to do everything we say, and if you don't get down on your knees and repent for being white or for being a Trump supporter, you will be beaten, maybe even killed. So think about next time you see your dad or your grandfather go outside with a Trump bumper sticker or a Trump hat on, which normally in this country, it's just supporting a political party, a political candidate. Old men went out and wore Romney hats. Old men went out and, unfortunately, wore Obama hats. Neither side was attacking their supporters. Today, if you publicly show your support for Trump, it doesn't matter if you're an 80-year-old man with a cane. These young punks are going to go out and beat you up because they don't like the guy you support. We are at a radical time, friends. We are at a dangerous time. And finally... The last thing that I can tack on to this dangerous time is no police. They want to get rid of the police. You need law enforcement, friends. Until the day comes when Christ's kingdom is set up on earth and everyone in their heart knows the laws of God, that this is right and this is wrong, you need to be told, every citizen of this nation, what is right and what is wrong. Now, is everyone following the laws of God perfectly? Absolutely not. Even our government is not. Even our laws are not set up as perfectly as they should be according to God's laws. But our laws are based on God's laws. Don't steal. Don't murder. Don't rape young children. Don't rape animals. Don't. I mean, these things are so simple, and you would think in a moral society, they just come as second nature. We should all just know that these things are wrong. There are people in this world who don't believe the word of God. There are sick people in this world who are, like I said, beating old men in the streets because they don't like the hat they're wearing. That's why we need law. And the Democrats want to do away with the law because of a few bad apples. And don't give me that, that all cops are bad because they're not. All white people are not racist. All blacks are not thugs. This... Garbage needs to stop with the CNNs and the rest pushing this racial divide narrative. And, and don't get me started on CNN because I'm telling you, friends, they are a 24-7 attack ad against Trump for the Biden campaign. If you don't believe me, just put it on and watch one hour, one hour. I challenge you to watch one hour of CNN a day and tell me that you find them saying one positive thing about this president. They're not a news network. They are a propaganda network. And I'm pretty sure they're being funded by the Democrat Party because there's no other explanation as to why every single story about this man is negative. And 99% of their reporting on any issue concerning him is negative. 
whereas the previous president, 100% was positive. 100%. So you can tell me they're not biased. When did this become acceptable? I mean, the media has got these kids hating this guy so much. Or again, he's not perfect, but at the same time, he's not a racist. He's not evil. He's definitely not the Antichrist. I just wrote a whole book about that, why the man is alive and well, but he's not in power yet. And I give all the reasons why. If anybody was close to being the Antichrist, it was Obama. And I can give you all the reasons for that if you want. I've written articles about it. So, this man is not evil. He's not the devil like they want you to believe that he is. He's actually more inclusive than they make him out to be. I mean, I get angry sometimes because he kind of supports the LGBTQ pride movement a little more than I'd like him to. And yet, they're deceived to believe, oh, he's this big, bad LGBTQ, LGBTQ is so many damn letters and I can't even get it straight half the time, that he's supposed to be some hater of their movement. His daughter and his son-in-law are liberal in their politics, mostly, and they support that. So that's why I think sometimes he has to throw them a bone. So, stop believing that just because somebody supports this man, that they're a racist from the 1700s. Nobody alive today owns slaves. Just because the color of their skin may be white, doesn't mean they support owning slaves. Doesn't mean they're a racist. And just because they wear a Trump hat, even though there may be a handful out there who are racist or white supremacist, the 325 million in this nation that support him are not all racist. So this garbage needs to stop. And again, I'm cut from a different cloth than most of these liberal guys today because I'm an old school, John Wayne loving conservative Christian. And that's why what happened the past two weeks has bothered me more than anything they have done to date. And the Democrats have done a whole lot to bother me. So let me just get right in this article. There's a lot to touch on. Okay, it says, not on my watch. The woke liberal mob is coming for Lord Jesus and John Wayne. So the whiny woke liberal radicals are now coming for our Lord and the American legend, John Wayne. Recently, a Black Lives Matter advocate and social justice activist, Sean King, tweeted that white Jesus was an oppressor and every statue or image of him should be torn down and destroyed. It is not wise to call for the desecration of images portraying what our Lord looked like in the flesh. Sean King is contending with the God of the universe and that is beyond foolish. It will not end well. He has obviously never read the Holy Bible. Because number one, Jesus Christ was a Jew. There's no debating that. You can't read the entirety of the Holy Bible and come to any other conclusion. So he wasn't light-skinned. But he wasn't dark-skinned. He was most likely a color in the middle when he was on earth. Number two, his glorious heavenly appearance which he bore before and after his coming down to earth, is whiter than the brightest white. Because he and the Father Yahweh are light. There is no darkness in them. Now, every dark-skinned believer on earth currently will receive a glorious body in the end that is bathed in that same glorious light. So they're going to be whiter than white someday too. Just like every white person today will be. Someday. Number three, as I've explained in past articles, in my books, and in these YouTube videos, the color of our skin today means absolutely nothing. Nothing whatsoever to God and will mean nothing in his eternal kingdom. Our God in heaven is colorblind. Read my past articles on race. Read the chapter on racism and even more signs of our times, my second book, for all of the reasons why that is. If you are a believer in Christ, you are my brother and sister. The shade of your skin today has absolutely no bearing on that fact. If you're not a believer, then you're not my brother and sister. And obviously, Sean King is no brother of mine. He attacked my Jesus as a symbol of oppression. 
when the complete opposite is true to any Christian who knows their Holy Bible. Lord Jesus and Jesus alone is the one who frees us from all oppression. The oppression of Satan that we would all have to endure on this earth without him. He saves us from every oppressing sin that would separate us from our holy God and Father in heaven. Sean King making God in the flesh out to be just another historical white man and oppressor is blasphemy. He needs to keep my Lord's name out of his mouth unless he praises and uplifts it like it should be. Of course, King probably won't do that because he appears to be a follower of the false prophet Muhammad of Islam. When a person on Twitter fired back at King's call for the vandalization of representations of Jesus and said that he would never call for such attacks on depictions of Muhammad, King responded by saying, Not a single statue of the prophet exists in the world. Not a painting. Nothing. For good reason. Well, King was right on one count. For good reason. That's because a statue of an adult molesting children is not only extremely distasteful, but I'm pretty sure it's illegal. I'm referring to Muhammad's nine-year-old bride, Aisha. Islam allows for child brides, thanks to Muhammad setting the standard for that. He was a violent warmonger, a pedophile, anti-Semite, and a false prophet. There are no depictions of him in this world because he deserves no honor. Lord Jesus, on the other hand, the savior of the world, the king, of kings and lord of lords cannot be honored enough. That is why there are so many statues and images of him all over the world. And I'm not a violent man like Islamists or Muhammad. I'm a man of peace like my Lord Jesus. But if I ever catch anyone defiling, destroying, and desecrating an image or statue of my Jesus, Michael the warrior is going to come out. Now, my namesake, Archangel, physically fights Satan and his fallen angels. Physically. So if i got to fight demonic human beings to defend my Lord's honor, then a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Now that, some of you may recognize, is a quote from one of the few other men I have greatly admired in this life. And that's the Duke, John Wayne. The radical liberals have taken a few sound bites from an hours long interview from 50 years ago out of context to claim that he was a racist. Because everybody today that's ever meant anything to America is apparently a racist. Nothing could be further from the tooth when it comes to John Wayne. Because this lie about John spread like wildfire across social media. The California Democrat Party is now trying to change the name of the famous John Wayne International Airport, and to take his statues down from there. The godless heathen in this nation can tear down all the historic statues they want from the Civil War and everything else. But when they start targeting my Lord Jesus and my role model, John Wayne, then they have got a problem with me personally. Wayne's son, Ethan, recently came out to defend his father's good name and set the record straight about the interview in question with the supposed racist quotes. In a statement in the media, Ethan said, let me make one thing clear. John Wayne was not a racist. I know that term is casually tossed around these days, but I take it very seriously. His true feelings were wrongly conveyed. The truth is, as we have seen in papers from his archives, he did not support white supremacy in any way and believed that responsible people should gain power without the use of violence. Those that knew him knew he judged everyone as an individual and believed everyone deserved an equal opportunity. He called out bigotry when he saw it. He hired and worked with people of all races, creeds, and sexual orientations. John Wayne stood for the very best for all of us. A society that doesn't discriminate against anyone seeking the American dream. It would be an injustice to judge him based on a single interview as opposed to the full picture of who he was. Again, that's John Wayne's son, someone who knew him daily. Throughout his film career, which spanned about five decades, John did hundreds of interviews. You can only find these so-called racist and homophobic remarks in one Playboy interview. Playboy was obviously an edgy magazine that voiced tough and uncomfortable questions. At that time in history, 
what Wayne said was not controversial because times were different back then. To judge him by today's liberal woke standards is unfair and unjust. Still, even today, if you were to listen to that interview in its full context and look into the times that he was living in, you'll see there was nothing wrong whatsoever with what he said. It was his opinion on how society was at that time, which he would have worded differently had the so-called racist words not been inserted into the questions that he was being asked by the interviewer. They literally put words into his mouth in that interview. Maybe we should be looking into the interviewer's views on race, not John's. A big reason why America is so damn backwards today is that men do not model their lives after John Wayne. He was always the good guy, defended those who couldn't defend themselves. He refused to do films that men couldn't watch with their own daughters. He is my role model. He always will be no matter how much the loud, ignorant haters try to dirty his name. I'll go to my grave defending the name of John Wayne. And if you want to put me there because of that, then you'll have to answer to my God. The so-called activists today attacking John Wayne and Jesus Christ are no different than Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime or Islamic terrorists. They believe that they can reshape the nation to their liking through deception violence, and intimidation. Well, it won't work with God-fearing men like me. I won't cower, and I won't be silent, especially when they attack my two greatest heroes. These radical anarchists will continue to wreak havoc on this once God-fearing Judeo-Christian nation until men dig down and find the courage of John Wayne to stand up to these commie bastards. To everyone who doesn't like watching the violent protests the riots and assaults on innocent people that are going on in America today. The time has come to stand up and to speak out against it. So I'll leave you with these wise words from the Duke himself to hopefully give you all the courage to do that. When you stop fighting, that's death. Now friends, I'm not going to do a book preview this week because I already told you if you want to read about Racism, you can just go ahead and grab the book on Kindle or in the paperback, and I've done previews on the racism chapter before, and this study kind of went a little longer than I would have hoped, so I'm going to leave you today with a preview from that book, and then you can see if it's something you want to read or not, but I'm going to pick up on Genesis chapter 21 in part two of this episode for the Bible study, but until then, friends... Stand strong. Don't give in to the intimidation. Don't fear. If God is on your side, who can be against you? Stand for God. Stand for truth. Stand for right. Stand for our Lord Jesus Christ in his holy name. Stand up and be courageous like the John Wayne that I know and love. For he also said, courage. Courage. Courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. May we all saddle up anyway. God bless y'all. Godspeed. Mm -hmm.